Well, well, well. Look what we've got here. An intruder in my mansion. You have quite the guts for attempting to break into my home and steal some of my precious stuff. You know that's a crime, right? And when people commit a crime, they become a criminal. And you know what will happen to a criminal, right? <laughs> oh, look at you. You're trembling. What? Are you scared of the tall lady in front of you? The one who caught you red-handed stealing in my place? <laughs> How adorable. Oh, you're not scared. Well, for someone who is quote-unquote not scared, you sure are shaking a lot. You're sorry. <laughs> really now, you're sorry. Do you really think I would just forgive you and let you be on your way just because you say you're sorry? <laughs> you really are dumb. You're intruding onto my property, and intruders must be punished. What will I do to you? Now that's a good question, sweetheart. What should I do with you? Give you to the police? Oh, no, no, sweetheart. That would have been too easy for you. I have a much better idea in mind. What is it? Well, I'm glad you asked, sweetheart. You see, I was currently conducting some kind of experiments, and I need humans as a test subject, and you came at the right time. I was actually starting to run short on test subjects. But if I keep abducting some random person off the street every time I need a new test subject, people might get suspicious, and it could attract some curious eyes to my facility. Though it's not all bad. After all, curious journalist equals free test subject. <laughs> what did I do to them? Will I use them for my experiments? A human test subject is considered illegal in this place, but I need them to get the result I desire. So I need a way to get some humans for me to experiment on, so I started to abduct some unwilling participants, should I say. <laughs> but when people start disappearing so suddenly, suspicion will arise. The journalists start to do their little investigations, and they manage to link the disappearance to me. Little did they know, they just dug their own grave. I track every journalist that knows too much, abduct them, and experiment on them. It's really fascinating for me to see their frightened face when I inject them with my experiment. But, as I said before, when people start disappearing so suddenly, suspicion will arise. I can't keep abducting every curious journalist that I see. Even though I'm pretty good at hiding my tracks, if I keep doing the same thing, people will find out eventually. My experiment is so close to perfection, but my test subjects are running low. I was thinking so hard to find a way to get more test subjects without the risk of getting caught. But then, my security system got triggered, and I found you. <laughs> Since you're a thief, no one will probably care about you, so the risk of getting caught is really low. Sure, you're maybe only one person. But hey, it's better than nothing, right? What experiments did I do? I'm experimenting with immortality. The human body is so weak, so fragile. They will decay over time and die in the end. It's pathetic. I have always been fascinated by the term of immortality. Just imagine being able to live forever, having all the time in the world to create or do anything you wanted, without the fear of running out of time, without the fear of death, without the fear of being forgotten. I want that kind of life. That's why I'm doing this experiment, to achieve immortality. It was quite tough to find some funding at first, but after a lot of hard work, I managed to trick some companies to fund my projects. They thought I was making a cure for cancer. Well, technically, I didn't lie to them. If the human becomes immortal, then cancer would have been no problem at all. <laughs> On top of that, I managed to find some people that have the same vision as me. So we work together as a team, with me in charge. 
Without them, my experiment wouldn't have come this far. But enough rambling. You're going to be my test subject whether you like it or not, and you will help me achieve perfection. Aw, the fear in your eyes, they're so adorable. <laughs> I'm insane. <laughs> Humans are an insane being, sweetheart. It's just some are more insane than the other. <laughs> now, you better cooperate or I must take you the hard way. You don't want to. <laughs> As if you had a choice. Come on, just give up and accept your fate. It'll be easier for the both of us. <laughs> I'd be careful with that knife if I were you. Do you think you have a chance at taking me down? Just look at me. I'm taller and bigger than you are. I would have just given up already if I were you. Now I'm going to give you one last chance. Drop that knife and give yourself to me. Or we could do this the hard way. <sighs> well, I guess you chose the hard way. There, there now, sweetheart. Just take a nice sleep. I'll take very good care of you. <laughs> oh, you finally woke up. How was your sleep, sweetheart? <laughs> I wouldn't bother if I were you. That strap on your wheelchair is very strong. You're only hurting yourself by struggling. Oh, by the way, I still haven't told you my name, right? How rude of me. Let me properly introduce myself to you. My name is Psycho. You could call me Dr. Psycho if you want. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Where are you? You're in my lab just below the mansion. Let you go? <laughs> now why should I? You're going to be my test subject, so there's no reason to let you out. You can scream all you want. No one is going to come and rescue you. The only people that are going to hear you are me, my team, and the other test subjects. <laughs> what will happen to you? It's simple. I'm just going to inject you with my experiment, contain you in this room, and see what will happen. But let's not rush things up, okay? Let me show you around for a bit. Come on, don't be shy now. Welcome to my lab. Here is where all the magic happens. I'm sorry for all the screaming and the weird sounds happening all around us. Hopefully they'll not bother you. <laughs> we are currently in the testing area, where we keep all the test subjects and experiment on them. As you can see, there are a lot of other people. Well, at least used to be people, each contained in their own little room. We do some tests on them, and the results are either they become anything but human, or they are just simply incompatible with life. <laughs> now, let's take a look at the other test subjects, shall we? Where should I start? Oh, I know. Now we're at test subject number 13. She's just a random person we snatched from the street. As you can see, she has no head, but she is still functioning. When we injected the serum into her, she had an immediate headache, and ten minutes later, her head exploded. But her other body parts are still functioning. Her healing capability is increasing as well, which is a good sign for my experiment. But there's no use in being immortal while having no head, right? Okay, on to the next one. Now we're at test subject number 25. He's a journalist that I caught snooping around my property. Now, you might be asking, is he dead? Since he's just lying there lifeless. And to answer your question, the answer is no, 
he's not dead. He's just paralyzed. He's awake and aware of what happened around his surroundings. For example, look at his eyes. He's aware that both you and I are here, and you could see from his eyes that he's pitying you. He knows what will happen to you. <laughs> Aww, there's that cute little fearful face again. <laughs> anyway, his healing properties were very high. His body healed almost instantly after getting some damage. But still, there's no use in being immortal when you can't do anything. Let's move on, shall we? All right, now we're at test subject number 69. Believe it or not, this one is my personal favorite. He's a journalist as well. He managed to hack into my security camera and found some forbidden footage. So I tracked him down and here he is now. In this one, we did make a little mistake while making the serum. So the serum didn't give us the result we hoped for, but it did give us an interesting result. His body is changing. The upper part of his body becomes the lower part, and the lower part of his body becomes the upper part. It's really fascinating. I don't know how long he will last, though. Probably another three days. Anyway, I think that's enough tour for today. It's time for the experiment. <laughs> you could protest all you want, sweetie. There's nothing that can change your fate right now. Let's get you back to your containment chamber, shall we? All right, you just wait right there, sweetie. I'll be right back with the serum. Don't go anywhere now. As if you could go anywhere. <laughs> I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> now, the thing you see in my hand right now is a syringe that contains the serum. I'm going to inject the syringe into you and just leave you here to see your reaction. Aw, oh, there's no use in begging, sweetie. Though, you're really cute when you beg like that. It makes me almost want to let you go. Keyword, almost. <laughs> Hey, if you really think about it, if you're lucky enough, this serum might be working, and you could be the first immortal human that ever lived. If you're lucky, that is. <laughs> now, let's not delay this any longer, shall we? There you go. Now, we just wait for the reaction. I'll be watching from a safer place, just in case you become aggressive. <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. <laughs>